Another great Thursday night, and we're glad you're with us for Resonate the Sound. I'm Chris Hanukkah. And I'm Christian McLaughlin. Tonight, very special form of Resonating the Sound. This one involves a little activity, doesn't it? It does. Tonight's message is a little bit different and unique. The title of the message is actually Running the Race. Wow. Before you get to anything crazy thinking, I'm not talking about physically running, I'm talking about mm -hmm. spiritually running. You know, many times in life we go through different situations where we'd like to give up and just right. throw in the towel. Right. But we have to keep running the race for Christ and doing what He has called us to do. And, and you know, you speak about you know running that race for Christ. You know, it says you know in the in the New Testament. I think Paul wrote it, talks about you know running, going towards that you know that prize of marking yes. a high calling. Yes. Um, somewhere in that vicinity. And one of the things is you know I'll admit to you and I'll admit to you. You know, as you know, I'm not that much of a runner or an athlete. Me either, brother. But the best part about this one is, it's not so much of the physical that we're going to run with, but yes. it's much more spiritual. The whole endurance factor yes. it comes in. Absolutely. You know, you have regular athletes runners have to practice to build up that endurance. Right. And it's the same way for us spiritually. We have to go through battles which make us stronger, which builds up our endurance. Exactly, because you know, without those, without those trials, without those tests, you know, without all of that. How can we go towards that mark? How can we go towards that goal? And that's the coolest thing about running that race for Jesus. It's not so much of, hey, I gotta be in a hurry, I yeah. gotta get there. But you're learning, because every step you point forward, you know, myself and Pastor, um, when we talked about it on uh, Resident Exile a couple weeks ago, and we talked about it inside the Power of the Blood series, we talked about the soul of your feet compared to the heel. Yeah. When your soul literally you know, whenever you put your foot down, what's really has most of the impact point is the yeah, soul. Absolutely. Because the soul has a little bit more power than the heel. Yeah. And the reason why we're bringing that up is, is because when it comes to the race, well, how about we let our spiritual souls really take authority over what we, yes. over what we have. We have to, absolutely. And tonight, all we can say is, be prepared to run the race. Let's go resonate, shall we? Not the title of my message or lesson, whatever you want to call it, is running the race. You know, many times we go through things that put a halt to our step that we're going through. We have a little stumbling block that we go through that makes us stop what we're going to. All right, Matthew's back there now. Running the race. Let's see what kind of graphics he's putting on the screen today. All right. There's a runner. That is definitely not me. I do not run, if you can't tell. But running the race. Let's go to my first scripture, Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. All right, let's all stand for the reading of the word. Amen. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so a great so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, once again, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for being able to be in your house, in your presence tonight, God. Father, we thank you for giving us just that opportunity to be able to come in and worship your glorious name, God. Father, I just ask you, knowing everyone that's here, Lord, from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, Lord, that they can receive your word and everything you have for them, God. And Father, anoint me, anoint me, Lord, as I bring your word forth, God. Remove Christian completely out of the way, God, and just have your way, Father. And Father, I just give you all the glory and the honor and praise, Lord, for what you're going to do in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, like that picture of a runner, or maybe he's jogging, I don't really know. Um, probably an athlete. You know, athletes such as runners understand what it takes to win a race. They know that it takes hours of training, hard work during practice, having good eating habits, and getting the rest that they need. 
runners not only properly nourish their body and recover well, but they also work hard to build that endurance so they can run that race. You know, in our Christian life, we run the race of faith. We don't strive for the crown that only one can receive, but we strive to finish strong in our faith. We all win by persevering in the faith and getting to that finish line. You know, like runners, we must lay aside every hindrance to our endurance that we have. So just as runners must properly nourish their body and recover well, we as Christians must work hard to strengthen our faith that we have to endure that race of faith that we're in. We must seek God daily in his word and through prayer. We must seek fellowship among other believers and let others encourage us in our faith. Because we all have those days where we're just a little bit down and we need some uplifting and encouraging words, amen? We all go through some things like, oh, man, today's just not my day. That's when your faith kicks in and someone else's faith kicks in and they just lift you up and it just changes your whole outlook on your day. But you must also embrace the trials that you face every day. Personal discipline is essential if you're able to keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Sometimes that's hard, though, keeping your eyes focused on what's important in your life. And that's Jesus above all else. So that means just as athletes must practice to get their strength, we must rely on God for our strength. Isaiah 40, verses 29 through 31. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You know, I did some research, and the Hebrew word for the phrase, and be weary, is yaga. It's Y-A-G-A. That means to be exhausted. So we're going to be exhausted while running our race of faith. But we must rely completely on the Lord because he will always give us that strength that we need during that time. Psalms 28, verses 7 and 8. The Lord is my what? He's my strength and he's my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength and he is the saving strength of his anointed. So even though we know that with God the race is already won, we also know there are going to be times where we become faint and exhausted and times where you just don't want to go on and want to give up. But, you know, in a race, the runner tell you that every ounce that they give counts. The lighter endurance the runner, the swifter the runner will be. The same is true in our Christian life. Many things will come and slow us down and eventually stall us in our race of faith. You know, sin clings to us, and sometimes it is very heavy and hard to get off of us because we don't let it go. But if we do what the Scripture says and lay aside every weight, the sin will be easier to get rid of if you keep your faith strong and know that Jesus can take care of everything. You know, I read an article that was written by a previous runner, and they stated they always had a love-hate relationship with running. She stated that she loves how she feels after a good run, and she loves how healthy she is, but she hates the soreness, the fatigue, and having to push herself to the limit every time. The last thing that she stated was that she always runs when she can because she knows the benefits of it outweighs the challenges. That's powerful. Same way in our Christian walk a lot. Yes, we're going to go through difficult times. But, you know, the benefits outweigh the challenges that we have to go through while we're here and while we're saved. Living for God and running the race of faith is the best thing for us. But it certainly has its challenges and obstacles in order for us to experience those benefits. We are called to do things that our flesh doesn't really want to do. But we choose the desires of the Spirit instead of the desires of the flesh because we know that the things of the Spirit are much, much better than the things of the flesh. But sometimes we find ourselves in a spot where we want to quit because we're tired. We're tired. I was there this morning. I didn't want to go into work today because I was tired. I didn't feel good. So what I do, instead of getting up and making myself go to work, I stayed home. Kind of shaking her head at me. Shame on Christian. I know it. But, you know, we make those decisions because we have the free will to do that. We can easily give up on God and stop in the race of faith for a minute or a season. Or we can pick ourselves up, push through the pain, and keep going to get to those benefits. But, you know, there are many ways for us to embrace the race that God has called us to run. The first one is 
We must understand that this is God's race. It's not our race. Acts 20 and 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Yes, we know that running the race of God will benefit us, but it's not all about us. God has called us to spread his love and to be the light of this world and to see that lost souls are saved. If we lose sight of that and start focusing on how we feel and ourselves, we will go down very quickly. It is when we realize that we are running the race for something much greater than ourselves, we will find out that with God anything is possible. Because what happens is when you just keep going and knowing that God's taking care of you, you say, wow, Lord, I may feel pain right now, but with you everything is possible. And the joy comes in the morning after my sorrow. Amen. The second thing that we can do to embrace the race that God has called us to run is to maintain an eternal perspective. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 25 through 27. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Now we're going to read the New Living Translation version of those same verses. It says, all athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. That's powerful. So although we go through very rigorous, athletes go through very rigorous training just to win a prize that doesn't hold much value after a period of time, just becomes a trophy on a shelf that begins to collect dust when it's years down the road. Be our, but our eternal prize that we are racing for will last forever. We don't have to worry about our prize losing its value. We don't have to worry about Jesus losing his value because he never will. Or heaven losing its value because it never will. Just knowing that your eternal prize doesn't lose its value should be enough motivation to endure the race that God has set before us. We know that it can be very difficult at some points, but it's very much worth it. But the thing is, we have to change our mindset to realize and know that it is worth it. You know, Pastor always talks about the t- all the time about renewing your mind, soul, and body. But it all starts with your mind. You have to change your mindset about how you see everything and how everything that you go through works together in God's plan and God's purpose for your life. Mine and Aunt Pam's favorite scripture, Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. That's not the King James Version, so don't quote me on that. That's the NIV Version. It's a powerful scripture, though. I've always held on to that scripture. There are all the hard times in my life. That one and Romans 8, 28. Don't worry, Matthew, I didn't give you these. All things work together for the good that love God, that are called according to whose purpose? His purpose. That's the whole mindset thing. If we can have the mindset that it's all about us, then it's all about us. But it's not about us at all. It's all about him. Amen. The third thing that we can do to embrace the race that God has put in front of us is to focus on Christ. Hebrews 12, verses 2 and 3. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Also, I'm going to read the New Living Translation version of those two verses. It says, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from the sinful people. Then you won't become weary and want to give up. Because nothing that we go through ever compares to what Jesus 
went through. People turning their back on him after he fed them, after he healed them, saved them. They turned their back on him. That would be hard to still love them. Anyone ever had anyone turn their back on you or stab you in the back before? It's hard to forget that person and still love them, right? Because they hurt you so deeply. Like you had so much trust and faith in that person and they just come against you. It's hard sometimes to keep on loving them, to keep spreading the love of God to that person. Be like, well, I just can't believe they would do that to me. But not everyone's perfect. No one's perfect. Everyone's going to make mistakes. You're going to have people come against you and not agree with what you're doing. But, you know, just dust the shoes off your feet and keep going. Keep running the race even when people come against you. People aren't going to understand what you're doing. That's okay. They don't have to understand exactly what you're doing. But we can speak to those things like you don't have any power over me. You're not going to bring me down. You're not going to stop me from doing what God has called me to do. I'm still running the race. Still going to go forward. The fourth thing that we can do to embrace the race is keep your lane clear. That's powerful. Keep your lane clear from every distraction, every hindrance, everything that could stop you or hinder you from running the race. Galatians 5, 7 and 8. Yea, did run well. Who did hinder you that ye shall not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not out of him that calleth you. What are we focusing on that is hindering us or slowing us down from doing the calling that God has placed on your life? Like it tells us in Hebrews, we must lay aside every weight. We must have our priorities straight and know that we are doing the work that has been set forth for us, for our life. We have to surround ourselves with people of like-minded faith that have the same focus of us and that motivate us to keep going and to not give up when things get hard or a struggle comes our way. The race that you're running is one that will be running for the rest of your lives. So you might as well go ahead and clear everything out of your way now so to have to deal with it later. That's hard, though, because sometimes that means getting rid of friends that you've been friends with forever. They, they don't have the same mindset as me. I can't, I can't hang out with you. And they don't understand that. They think you're being a jerk and just blowing them off. And that becomes very hard because then you begin to feel lonely. Say, but Lord, they're my family. They're my friends. And he said, there's only so much you can do for people. And sometimes you literally just have to let them go. Because it's about their salvation. They have to work out their own salvation. You can always witness to them, but sometimes they're just not going to accept it. But you know what? You keep running the race, and you move them out of your lane, and you just keep going. And that's hard. But that's when that faith just kicks in and say, Lord, I may not have reached that person, but I'm still going forward. There's other people you have in my path that you have set for me to reach God. Someone else can reach that person, Lord. Even though they're so close to me, God, I know you're going to send someone else. So we must clear the things out of the way that could weigh you down. Like I said, that could include friends, families, coworkers, anybody, anything. Get it out of your lane and out of your way. That way you don't trip on it while you're running the race. The fifth thing you can do to embrace the race is don't give up too soon. 1 Corinthians 9 to 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. Even though we will run this race for the rest of our lives, doesn't mean that we won't experience victories along the way. We will see many victories along the way leading up to the ultimate victory. But you're going to be tempted to give up, but you must keep running the race. We know what awaits for us, and it's an eternity in heaven. Some days are going to be super easy to run that race for God. Some days are going to be tough, and you'll be like, oh, God, I can't do this today. I literally cannot go forward, God. I don't know why you put this in front of me, Lord, but I can't do it. I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to give up. But, you know, remember, you're running a good race that has an amazing prize waiting for you. So keep running. Never give up and finish strong. Philippians 3 and 14. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We must press on because we know where our strength comes from. Psalms 118 and 14. The Lord is my strength and song and it's become my salvation. Psalms 37, 39 through 40. But the salvation of the righteous is the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. 
and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. That's the main part of that whole verse, because we trust in him. If we don't trust in him, the race is not going to be a very easy one. It's not always going to be easy, even if you do trust in him. But if you trust in him and have the faith in him, it makes it a little bit easier. Because, you know, everything that comes in your way is just part of God's plan. So, Lord, let me just hop over this obstacle and keep going, God. And don't let me look back at what the obstacle was. Let me keep running the race. Psalm 73 and 26. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. How many of you ever failed before? We all fail daily, whether you realize it or not. We all fall short of the glory of God. You may think you're perfect and you just never sin. Might ought to just check yourself. Because we all fail, fall short of the glory of God. But you know, it's okay. We're human. But that doesn't mean deliberately go out and sin. I think we all have a little bit of that problem. You just have a look of disgust on your face like, what in the world? Sometimes your face can hurt more than words to someone. So there's always something that you can improve on. There's always an area of improvement in some part of your life. But you just have to dig down and find what that area is. Because none of us are perfect. Even though we may think we're perfect and we have it all together, we're not perfect. We don't have it together. Our flesh and our heart fails. But God is the strength of our heart, and he's our portion forever. Psalms 46 and 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And we all know this one, Philippians 4.13. I want you to read it. I can do all things which strengthen me. We can do all things, not through ourselves, through Christ who strengthen us. So that's just a few of the many times in the word that he tells us that he is our strength and that we should not fear and not give up on him. The race has been set before us, but it's up to us to complete it or to stray away. There will be times that you will, like I said, want to give up or you become hindered by certain things, but God always puts you right back on the path, scoots those hindrances out of the way if you allow him to. You must run the race that God has set in motion, and you will see the victories. Knowing that God is always with us and that he's always around us. Joshua 1 and 9. Sorry, I've got a lot of scripture tonight for you. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. That is so powerful. So it's another reminder that wherever we go, even in the sin that we are doing at that time, the Lord thy God is still with us. I'm telling you, this, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing this. You ever feel like, you know, you shouldn't be in a situation? He's like, oh, that's just my conscience. That's not your conscience. That is literally the Lord working on you. Like, don't be in this situation. You have an opportunity to get yourself out of the situation and stop it before it happens. But it's up to you. You know, the Bible tells us that God goes before us. He is omnipotent, he is omnipresent, meaning that he is everywhere and is all-knowing. So just as the woman with the issue of blood saw the press around Jesus, we have a press around us of his spirit, always. God is that press around us, never leaving us, never forsaking us. Proclaim that your strength comes from no one else except God. Proclaim that you will have the endurance to do what God wants you to do in the race that he has set forth in your life. Proclaim that God is above you and above everything, and he is your everything. Proclaim that even when you get tired, you're not going to give up. Proclaim that no matter what comes my way, I'm still going to run the race for God. Proclaim that no matter what family member or friend gets in my way, I'm still going to go. Proclaim that, Lord, I'm never giving up on you, God. Even though I give up on you sometimes, Lord, help me not to do it anymore, God. Because there are times where we just want to. So, Lord, change my mindset to keep running the race that you put for me, God. Press on. Let me press on towards you, God. Let me go and do what others will not do, God. 
Let me stay strong in you, Lord. Let me keep running your race, God, that you have set for me. Don't let me give up, Lord. Lord, I know there's going to be hard times, Lord. Don't let me stop. Lord, I'm going to stumble, Lord, but let me get back up and keep going and not be discouraged. Lord, help me to run your race that you have set for me. Help me to keep going, Lord, to not look back at the things that are in the past, to not look back at the mistakes that I have made, to not even look back on the same day of mistakes that I made an hour ago. Lord, don't even let me think about that, God. Let me repent and get it under the blood and keep going forward and running the race. Lord, it's not always going to look like that picture or be all sunny and beautiful. It's going to be rainy sometimes and stormy sometimes. You all know I hate storms. So I definitely, when a storm comes, a spiritual storm comes, I'd want to just back down and not run the race. Because I see, is it a challenge and it's a hard time? But instead of backing down, that's when you just get up, get stronger, and go forward. And keep running the race. A little bit different tonight. But it's a good difference. Because, you know, we can all use that reminder to keep running the race that God has set for you. All use that reminder, yes, things are going to come against you that are going to be challenging for you. But as long as you keep that faith, the faith the size of what, Aunt Pam? Grain of a mustard seed. Remember Aunt Pam preached that message and all gave us all a little bitty mustard seed that night at the old church. That's all you have to have. You can have more than that, but that's the minimum amount you have to have. It's like literally nothing. That's powerful. What that little bit of faith can do for you. And what God can do through that little bit of faith for your life. And how it can change your life and affect everyone's lives around you. It's powerful. Running the race. Like I mentioned, I'm not a runner physically. Need to be, but I'm not. So it would be very hard for me to go out and run a race. I don't even know what they're called, like a, what is it, Matthew, like 20-meter dash or something? I don't know. Don't get me in line. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Tyler Hush. Marathon. Yeah, a marathon. No way I could do a marathon. What was it 27 miles or something like that? I've done a 5K before now. But I didn't run it. Just walked it. So it would be hard for me to run a marathon. You know why? Because I haven't trained for a marathon. I haven't had the strength and endurance to do a marathon. It would take me 17 months probably to walk 26 miles in one setting, <laughs> a marathon. But people that have trained to do that's literally what they set their minds to do and train for that specific marathon. We have to train our mindsets to do with the race that God has set for us, to do the things that he wants us to do. Renew your mind, your soul, and your body. But it all starts with the mind. Because if your mind ain't right, then your body's not going to function like it needs to. Then your soul's definitely not where it needs to be. So tonight, I encourage you, whatever comes your way, just know that God is in control of it all. To not give up when it would be a lot easier just to give up, or it seems that way. So Lord, it would be easy for me just to sit back and let them watch them run their race for you, Lord. I'll just cheer them on. That's a lot of the problem today that we have. We have a lot of cheerleaders. I'm going to say it, a lot of cheerleaders in the church. Not enough runners. Not enough people participating in what they need to be. And that's where we've got today. So, I got you, Lord. Are you a cheerleader or are you a runner? In that sense. Are you the one just help motivate other people or are you actually running the race as well, getting all down and dirty and doing the race for God, getting uncomfortable, getting out of your comfort zone. But it's hard sometimes to get out of your comfort zone. I remember the first sermon I ever preached, I think it was like two and a half minutes, way out of my comfort zone. But, you know, after you do something for the first time and it's out of your comfort zone, the next time you're not as nervous. You're still a little bit nervous but you have a little bit of confidence, too. Like, oh, I've done this before. I can do this now. And then you do it, I don't know how many times I preach now. Yes, I still get nervous, 
but it's completely different. Because I know what God has called me to do. And I'm not nervous. I'm just, it's a different, I don't know how to explain it. I really don't. But once you do something over and over and over, you get used to it. You're still always growing. And yes, there will be times you're nervous. There's the times I get up here and I'm like scared to death to preach. You ever get there, McKenna? Yeah, Pam? <laughs> McKenna says no. McKenna's perfect. <laughs> but no, there's always going to be times where you feel like, man, I did terrible today. Times you get up here and like you just give your heart up and like, man, that was just awful. And those are usually the sermons that everyone brags about. And you're like, are, are you deaf? Like, <laughs> I'm not lying, y'all. Or there's times like, you're like, man, worship service just was not good this morning. Then everyone brags about it. Like, that song did not go good, but everyone loved that song. doesn't make sense. But that's how God works. So it doesn't have to make sense to us at all. But as long as you put in the work, have the endurance and the strength to run the race for God, and don't give up when obstacles come your way and keep your faith strong, you're going to keep running that race. You're going to feel good about running that race about not giving up. Just examine where you are in your race for the Lord, in your race that God has placed in your life. Are you just going and having the faith that knowing that God's going to take care of everything, or do you stumble on every little thing that comes your way, and then you give up for like a day or two or a little week or so, or a season? Then you're behind all that ground you could have covered if you would have just kept that faith strong. But we all get to a point, though, where we get lazy and don't want to do it anymore. And you're just like, man, today's just, today's just not the day. I don't feel like running the race today, Lord. But, you know, it's really not up to us. I mean, it is, because we have free will. But, you know, I'm sure God didn't, or Jesus didn't feel like it a lot of days either. When he was getting tortured and beaten crown of thorns slammed on his head and the 39 stripes on his back and nailed to the cross. Sure, he didn't want to do it either. He did it. Sure, he didn't want to run that race. That's why he prayed, Father, not my will, but yours. And we have to pray that too. Not my will, Lord, because it'd be easy for me just to lay on a couch and be lazy and watch everybody else run on by. So y'all go ahead, I'm going to sit here and eat my popcorn with some butter on it. I'm being truthful. It'd be easier for people to do that, for us to do that. But you know, without the hard work that we have to put in, we're never going to see the benefits if we don't put in the hard work. So I invite you tonight just to examine your life. See where you are, what status you're in. And if you need to Well, all I can say is, you know, there were a lot of things even watching that and even taking a look at that that I never really really had an opportunity to openly admit you know there were some areas that I do fall short on and you know the Bible said, always says you know we always fall short we all God. Yes. but the one thing that really did encourage me with was keep running never give up and finish strong Yes, you know, um, one of the scriptures in Psalms says, The Lord is my strength and song, and it's become my salvation. Mm -hmm. So anytime that we're feeling weak, He's always there with His strength to lift us back up. And, and, we, and, and the best part about it is that you said is, you know, our battles are not ours. Yes. They belong to the Lord. And, and this is God's race. And whenever His cutoff time is, it's, I mean, it's His cutoff time. And that's, that's to me, that's encouraging because, you know, a lot of times we fail to realize that, you know, we do have struggles, but I think we, a lot of times we're too focused on our struggles rather than the person that's got it. Absolutely, and my favorite scripture in the entire Bible is Jeremiah 29 and 11. And this is an NIV version, it says, mm -hmm. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Right. My plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So every struggle that you go through, God already knew it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And the best part is about God knowing it's going to happen, He put that right there just not only to test your faith, yes. but to test your endurance. Because, you know, one you know, one of the things, if you really, really get down, what about Galatians 5, 22, 23, you know, when it talks about the fruits of the Spirit? Yes. What's one of those key ingredients of that fruits of the Spirit? Long-suffering. Long -suffering. 
And long suffering it requires this grace. Yes, it does. And it's not so much of the physical, but you know, let's you know, let's talk a little bit about that. That long suffering part. Why is it a little bit difficult for us to really, really go long suffering here? Yeah. You know, we all go through things that we just don't really want to go through. And that right. is all part of long suffering. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it helps build that endurance that we need to just go forward in Christ. Exactly. And we sincerely pray that you've enjoyed tonight's broadcast and we also pray that tonight's broadcast resonated directly to you. Next week, we have another great episode of Resonate the Sound, and we indeed pray that you join us. Hey, God, thank you for letting us resonate your sound. Thank you at home for watching. For our senior pastors, Brian and Carmen Adams, for our social pastor, Christian McLaughlin, for our entire staff and everyone here at Resonate, I'm Chris Honekin. We do indeed say to you, show love, Get peace and what's out of the park? Resonate the name of Jesus. We'll see you next Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Have a good night, everybody.